What are the potential genetic risks associated with marrying a second cousin? Hello, viewers. Today, we're going to explore an intriguing topic, the potential genetic risks associated with marrying a second cousin. It's a topic that intersects biology, genetics, and societal norms, and we'll aim to present a clear, comprehensive view based on scientific research. What does it mean to be second cousins? Before delving into the genetic risks, let's clarify what it means to be second cousins. You and your second cousin share great-grandparents, but not grandparents. Your parents and their parents are first cousins. So, while second cousins are indeed part of your extended family, they are genetically more distant compared to your immediate family or first cousins. What is the genetic risk generally? The genetic risk we're talking about here is the probability of having children with genetic disorders. This risk increases with marriages between relatives because they are more likely to carry the same harmful recessive genes. If both parents carry the same harmful gene, there's a 25% chance their child would inherit the disease. This concept is also known as consanguinity, and it's why there's a stigma attached to cousin marriages in some societies. How does this apply to second cousins? When it comes to second cousins, the genetic risk decreases significantly compared to first cousins. For unrelated individuals, the risk of having a child with a serious birth defect or disability is around 3 to 4 percent. For first cousins, this risk increases to 4 to 7 percent. In the case of second cousins, the increased risk is barely noticeable. It's closer to the baseline risk for unrelated individuals. This reduced risk for second cousins is due to the lower degree of shared genes, and therefore, a lower chance of both individuals carrying the same harmful recessive gene. What does this mean for second cousin marriages? While the genetic risks are indeed present in marriages between relatives, including second cousins, it's important to remember that these risks are generally low and very close to the risks present in the wider population. Moreover, several other factors can also influence the health of offspring, including lifestyle, environment, age, and overall health. Genetic counseling can provide a more accurate estimate of risk based on your family history and specific circumstances. We hope this video has given you a clearer understanding of the potential genetic risks associated with marrying a second cousin. While there's a slightly increased risk, it's much smaller than many people assume, and it's nearly the same as the risk in the general population. Always remember, whether you're considering a marriage with a second cousin or anyone else, genetic counseling can provide valuable insights and clarity. Thanks for watching, and we look forward to bringing you more insightful content.